So the next pose, this is where he's in at his highest point now of the jump. Okay. I'm going to pose this one out and then what I'll do for the remaining there's another three poses what I'll do is pause the video uh, pose those out because this is uh, kind of obvious what's happening here so we can just zip through these okay torso again Okay, remember it doesn't have to be bang on the money with your drawings. These are just for reference for where you need to be posing these out. Okay, so at this point he's going to be concentrating still on where he's landing but the head's going to be looking down now because he's obviously uh, closer to his target in distance. So he's not going to be looking so ahead. Uh, these legs you can bend. There we go. Okay. So there we are. We're at the highest point here, and then. What I'm going to do is just quickly pause this video and just drop these into pose. Okay, I'm back. I've just um, key posed the character in in these last poses here. So you can see here we're all good to go now. So I've got all the key poses in place and animates come in in between with this line here has created the in-between so if we take this and scrub through the timeline slowly we can see here the jump and in the upright position so let's play through that I'm gonna hit enter couple more times so what you can obviously do is add more cells between each of these to slow down or speed up the animation and of course you've got easing and so on and so forth but uh, we're concentrating on the key poses here and the action so we just want to get across what the character's doing here. Let's take a look at the um, motion line we've got here. So if we select this layer and hit our shortcut, which is Shift and F11, we can see here the path. So let's zoom in. You can see in the first pose to the second it dips down this is where we've got that pose coming down here and then slightly goes up here for the to elevate himself off and then this next one this is where we're in full flight next one we're at the peak of the animation let's uh, move along and then in the others we're kind of coming down and this one dips down where he's bending the knees to kill the bounce and then in the upright position as you can see if we scrub through the line he's following and I'm actually tempted to just tweak the tiniest amount here just so I've got a bit more Of a slight curve there, I think that might be better. Actually, let's see what happens if we bring it down more. 
Yeah, you see that's wrong. He kind of flies along the ground there, so it needs to be. Actually, maybe round about where it was. So that's a good thing. You can at least come in and tweak and play around with this and see see what works. I mean, we could make it a touch higher as well. So he jumps higher. So let's remove that line. So again, we're going to select the layer, Shift F11. That disappears. I'm just going to play through this. So hopefully it looks okay on the the video screen because obviously the video capture software translates this okay I'm reasonably happy with that what you'll notice however though if we zoom in between the first few keyframes watch the feet they go down and up and what I want is here I want them to be stationary I'm tempted to change those feet out to a different spot we, we can change that later on so what we're going to do is go into the IK uh, setup of the character and what we can do here is between these two key poses is now the feet to the ground so we don't have this dip here so to do that we need to select the character and select this here it kinda of looks like a kite if we click that that brings up the IK setup of the character So what we need to do now is follow a sequence of steps to nail the feet to the ground. So using the inverse kinematics tool, we're going to do that. So come over to tool properties, make sure that's open. And what we're going to do first is nail the right foot down. So coming down to the peg, let's go down to the right foot. And on the first frame, because we want to uh, nail the foot to the ground between the first and the second key frame. So we select the first one. Let's zoom in. And what we're going to do is come over to the third icon here and we're going to click on the apply IK constraints mode. Now we move down to the options, this keyframe. This is selecting the keyframe you're on, so we click that. Now what we need to do is go to where we want the nail to end. So we go to the next keyframe and what we're going to do is go to the top of the chain in the leg because the top of the leg the lower leg and the foot are all part of a hierarchy so we go to the top going to shift select the top of the leg so make sure you press shift then select it will turn red come down here I'm going to click the nail on and this icon here with a padlock which is the hold orientation key we're going to click that and what will happen now is the foot, the spline there, will turn blue. So click this, and it'll ask in this box, apply constraints for the layer right foot from frame 1 to 5. That's asking if you want to constrain the foot where it is between the frames 1 and 5. That's exactly what we want to do, so click yes. And what that's done now, it's kind of keyframed the foot into one position throughout those first few frames and you'll see the left foot is still bouncing because we need to work on that so the right foot's nailed so need to do the same process this time with the left foot so let's bring that down and select it on the first keyframe so it's selected the IK tool that we selected earlier the constraints mode is, is already set so we come down to options keyframe so we select that again we need to go to the next keyframe where we want the nail to 